some people's mock drafts and I see some of the trades that they do, I, I, I kind of laugh, right? Because um, some trades just aren't realistic. Like it, it's it's very rare for your team to pick at pick eight and then you move down to pick 12 and then pick 16 and pick 23 and then pick 30 and you have a bunch of second round picks. It's, it's very rare that stuff like that happens, right? So in my mock draft, um, I have a couple trades and all of my trades are done courtesy of the NFL trade chart. I'm using the math from the trade chart. So trying to make the trades as realistic as possible. Um, so we're going to jump into a mock draft. Um, my name is Jace and uh, you guys have, have found your way onto my uh, onto my channel. So um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use the draft network. So I, I think the draft network is probably the best mock site, in my opinion. Um, I, I like Pro Football Network. I just don't like Pro Football Network when I have to do a mock for all teams because it doesn't really work. But if you want to do a mock for just your team specifically, then the Pro Football Network is perfect for you because the Pro Football Network site will um, give you all of your draft picks. So you, so you don't have to, you know, fake a trade just to see what you have to pick with. It shows you that whenever you pick. And it also tells you how many teams want to trade up or, you know, or trade down with you or whatever. Um, so we're going to jump into it. So we're going to pick every single team. Um, so all 32 NFL teams, uh, we're going to do one round. It's going to be manual. It's going to be me doing it. Um, and so we're going to run the draft. Um, and I mean, do I have to say anything? Like, <laughs> I, don't, I feel like at this point, when it comes to Trevor Lawrence, like, there's nothing that that's you know that you have to say like some people think he's the greatest quarterback prospect that they've ever seen um i probably wouldn't go that far i think um i probably liked andrew luck more coming out of stanford but um trevor lawrence is the pick here to to go to uh, to jacksonville so with the number two pick um on the board right now we have panay Sewell, zach wilson justin fields jamar chase kyle pitts right so um, while I don't believe, you know, I don't believe that Sam Darnold is, is a bad quarterback. I just think that Sam Darnold at times was put into a horrible position, um, because realistically, when you have Adam Gase as your coach, there's only so much that you can do, right? You know, Ryan Tannehill left, uh, Miami and went to Tennessee and got a big contract and has been balling out, right? Granted, Derrick Henry's running them. And carrying the whole team but Tannehill does his job right um I think that's what Sam Darnold can do for a team um but the the, the problem is you have to pay Sam Darnold and it just doesn't make any sense for a Jets team to pay Sam Darnold when they can get a Zach Wilson for cheap right so I'm gonna go ahead and and give them Zach Wilson um in this particular mock here um but Zach Wilson has has some some good and some bad, just like every prospect um, coming into the season. He was competing for his job. Uh, granted, he was very eager to compete for his job. So, I mean, that that's a that's a good thing. He didn't feel like he didn't feel disrespected. I guess uh, he went out and he won the job, which is what he should do. Um, he did have uh, some surgery on his shoulder on a labrum tear back in 2018. Uh, he had hand injuries in 2019. Um, and <laughs> he sometimes leads a receiver to their demise uh, with some of his throws. But when he's on, he's on. He's athletic. He shows up in the clutch. He, he's a good zone read guy, a good RPO quarterback. Um, his, his pro day is on the 26th of March, along with Michigan and Virginia Techs. Uh, and we'll see how he looks on those throws um, and the ability to throw on the run and things like that. The only thing that's really holding me back from Zach Wilson is just the fact that coming into the season, um, well, it's two things. One, coming into the season, he wasn't the official starter. He had to earn his job. My issue is, you know, that didn't happen with Trevor Lawrence or, you know, these other quarterbacks that are coming out. People had their jobs, um, especially someone who would be going top two. Um, and then, of course, um, shoulder injuries. I don't like shoulder injuries on quarterbacks. Um, just like I don't like knee injuries on running backs. I, I just I, I I don't think that it's not that I think they'll they'll fail because of it. Um, it's just something that I would be OK if it wasn't there. Right. You know, if, if Trevor Lawrence, 
you know, um, you know, showed up with with two shoulder labrum tears, I think people would be alarmed. So um, Zach Wilson had his, but it was a few years ago. And I think I think he'll be healthy and I think he'll he'll be good. So we'll go ahead and take um, Zach Wilson. I sent him to the New York Jets. Um, so pick three on the board right now for Miami. Is Panay Sewell, Justin Fields, Jamar Chase, Kyle Pitts, Jalen Waddle, Caleb Farley, right? Those are the top players on the board according to Pro Football, according to the Draft Network. So um, the Dolphins could absolutely get an offensive lineman. Absolutely. They could get Panay Sewell. They could get Ray Sean Slater. Um, they could wait until the second round, get Alex Leatherwood. They could also get Tevin Jenkins at the back half of the first round. Um, they could do a lot of things with their pick. Um, but I think... Miami is going to have to make a decision here. Do they want to sit here and potentially miss out on a um, you know a Devontae Smith or um, or Jalen Waddle, you know, or Jamar Chase um, to move down, right? So what we'll do is I'm going to look 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 through here and we're gonna figure out who wants to possibly jump up for a quarterback. So we have the Washington football team in the back half of the draft. We have the Chicago Bears. At one point, it was the Indianapolis Colts, but they traded to get Carson Wentz. Um, the Jets just, just got their quarterback. Roethlisberger's old, you know, so who knows? Baker is coming up on a contract. Um, Lamar, I believe Lamar is, is the guy in Baltimore, and I'll talk about that later. The Saints, possibly, and that's pretty much it. And you get up to the early part of the draft, and... You're solidified at quarterback here, here, and here at 13, 14, and 16, but not at 15. You're solidified at 11 and 10. You just paid Dak Prescott a whole bunch of money. You're not solidified at nine. You're not solidified at eight. So we're going to look at the Carolina Panthers here. The Panthers have been in the sweepstakes to get Deshaun Watson. They try to get Matthew Stafford. They they really want a quarterback. Um, so they need something different at quarterback. They need something electric. Teddy Bridgewater was playing it safe and um, having that kind of quarterback caused Carolina to lose some, some tight games. Games where like elite quarterbacks will put you over the top. Like if you look at five of their losses, they lost by four to Vegas, three to New Orleans, two to Kansas City, one to Minnesota, five to Denver. You know, so th they're losing by less than a touchdown, less than six points. Get a quarterback that can turn those losses to wins and you're 10 and six. And in the playoffs with a quarterback who can just make a few more throws. So um, I have them trading up here. I have them trading up and I have them coming up to take Justin Fields because Justin Fields can add a little bit more to the team. You add him in with DJ Moore, Robbie Anderson and Christian McCaffrey. Um, and I think it just makes more sense to get a rookie quarterback. Um, I know that it's probably impossible to get Deshaun Watson without giving up Christian McCaffrey. Um, but it's probably easier to trade up to get a quarterback and keep Christian McCaffrey. So I probably keep my the offensive weapons together if if I'm Matt Rule and Scott Fitterer and and uh, David Tepper. So keep a low cap for four to five years. Keep your pieces around them. That makes the most sense to me. Um, now Fields does have a problem locking onto receivers. Um, that's somewhat fixable in the NFL, um, but. I do believe in his if he does play his rookie season um, because Teddy Bridgewater technically is still going to be there. It makes more sense to cut Teddy next season. That's where you save more money. Um, but if you can trade Teddy for anything to get that contract off the books, then then I'm all for it. Uh, but I believe Justin Fields is going to throw a lot of interceptions when he's when he plays, not for his whole career, but just early on, because Justin Fields still doesn't know NFL open versus college open. And he's going to have to make some tight throws when people are technically NFL open and they might get intercepted. So um, that that's just that just comes with with the territory here. So uh, I'm going to be the Carolina Panthers here and I'm going to um, go ahead and execute a trade with the Miami Dolphins. So I'm going to give them eight. They're going to give me three. I'm going to give them thirty nine. So far, it's not looking good. And then I'm going to throw in a second rounder next year. Right. So again, all my trades are on courtesy of the NFL trade chart. So I gave up eight, 39, and a two next year for pick three. So let's see if Miami takes the deal. Congratulations, the Dolphins have accepted your offer. The Carolina Panthers are on the clock. 
and they're going to take Justin Fields here. Now, I know people, um, you know, it could be Trey Lance. You know, who knows? Uh, but I, I do know that um, I would probably take Justin Fields just because I've seen Justin Fields do it more um, than I've seen Trey Lance do it. But if Trey Lance can, can you know, strike, and, you know, can, if, they can, if Trey Lance is good and he plays anything like he did in college with those legs and that ability to throw that deep ball, um, who knows? But the Carolina Panthers, the New Orleans Saints, and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are going to find out because Trey Lance is going to the Atlanta Falcons fourth overall. Yes, I have four quarterbacks in the top five, all four back-to-back. -back. So Matt Ryan's cap hit um, over the last three years of his deal will be 40, 41, and $36 million. He got to go. He got to go. So Atlanta does take a blow by cutting him pre-June uh, 1, but much like Teddy Bridgewater's deal, it's better to cut Matt Ryan next season. Um, let Trey Lance sit, get ready behind Matt Ryan, and then turn him loose next season. Um, Lance can run. Like I said, he can throw it over the scoreboard, but he only did it for 16 games. Um, just, just the idea that we're possibly about to get Justin Fields versus Trey Lance for the next decade has to excite you if you're a football fan. So um, the Cincinnati Bengals are on the clock here. Um, they are going to go ahead and select Penny Sewell. Um, so I don't really have much to say here. Um, protect your quarterback. Jonah Williams played left tackle last season. He's entering year three. And in my opinion, was the best offensive lineman on the team. Um, I believe Jonah goes to right tackle. Penny becomes day one uh, left tackle. Um, either way, you have two bookend tackles who are very good pass blockers and can help keep your quarterback upright. Um, if you want to flip them and you know put one at left, put one at right, that's fine. Um, I just know that both guys are an upgrade over Bobby Hart. So um, when you draft the quarterback number one overall, you, you want to keep him upright. Um, as, as you guys will see later on when we get into the draft, and I talk about Jacksonville, for example, the key thing about Jacksonville is the same thing with Cincinnati. Keep your quarterback up. You know, you can you can get weapons, but when it comes to getting two bookend tackles, when you, when you have the opportunity to do that, you do that. And that'll help your team out a lot. Just ask the Indianapolis Colts when it comes to getting an offensive line. So, with pick six, the Philadelphia Eagles are on the clock. Um, I have the Eagles taking Jamar Chase here. Um, I know some Eagles fans want Howie fired for his inability to make good decisions when it comes to drafting. Uh, you think about last year with not moving up for CeeDee Lamb and not taking Justin Jefferson. And, you know, and the Minnesota Vikings brass laughed at the Eagles for taking Jalen Rager. Um, so it's just, it's, it's embarrassing if you're an Eagles fan. So I definitely understand the, the frustration. Um, but there is a narrative though, that, that how we hasn't tried to fix the wide receiver core. Um, that's not true. Um, uh, because in, in his executive roles, whether it's player personnel or, or general manager over the last six drafts, how he's taken seven receivers two in the first round, granted they, they were Nelson Aguilar and Jalen Rager, but he's taken two in the first round. Uh, the problem is they're not good receivers and they don't hit on the receivers. Um, I think that changes in this draft. And I think they definitely hit on, on their receiver this, uh, this year in 2021. And they go ahead and take the best one. Uh, he had 1700 yards and 20 touchdowns in one season. Um, and you give him Jalen hurts to work with and Dallas Goddard and, and their, their run game. And then of course you, you pair that up with the uh, legendary Greg Ward, <laughs> and you, you might you might have something. So, um, I'll go ahead and give the Philadelphia Eagles Jamar Chase. Um, I know people were kind of mocking Kyle Pitts to them, and you know I, I'm I understand it because Kyle Pitts is a is an offensive weapon, um, but Kyle Pitts is a tight end. You know, regardless of what we want to call him. When he gets drafted, he's going to be drafted as a tight end. He's going to be in line at times. He's going to be outside, which is what you already do with Dallas Goddard. So um, I would much rather solidify my, you know, number one receiver position um, and make Jalen Rager my number two or my slot and, and keep Dallas Goddard and just ball out that way. That's what I would do if I were the Philadelphia Eagles. So pick number seven, um, I went ahead and gave the Detroit Lions um, Devontae Smith. Um, the Lions hired Dan Campbell and Brad Holmes to coach their team and run their organization. 
Uh, two very good hires, in my opinion. Even though Dan Campbell is hilarious when it comes to press conferences, don't get it twisted. He's a hell of a football coach. Um, you know, Brad Holmes did say that drafting the quarterback isn't off the table. He's lying. The Lions have five picks in the top 100, and I'm sure Brad wants more. Um, especially with the Lions electing to withhold the tag on Galladay, and Marvin Jones is is uh, walking um, unless they decide to re-sign him. Um, you want an additional pick or two to come up and get an Elijah Moore out of Ole Miss or get Tylen Wallace out of Oklahoma State. You pair that with Devontae Smith and Tyrell Williams, and you have a nice receiving core with Jared Goff. So um, I will go ahead and give them Devontae Smith here. Um, pick eight is going to be Jalen Waddle to Miami. So Miami is going to is going to finally get their receiver. Now, granted, it's not Jamar Chase or Devontae Smith, but a lot of people believe that Jalen Waddle is the better prospect over Devontae Smith. Um, I think they're they're one A one B because before Jalen Waddle's injury, he had more yards and less catches. He was more explosive than Devontae Smith prior to his ankle injury. So, um, Devontae Parker began to come into his own. In 2019, he had a 1,200-yard season. In 2020, he didn't get 1,000 yards, but he did lead the team in receptions, yards, and was tied for second in touchdown catches. If you add a piece like Jalen Waddle to the mix with Parker and Gesicki and you get you a running back, um, then you might be cooking with gas. Um, so I think the Dolphins – I honestly believe that the Dolphins will take whichever receiver is on the board. So whether Waddle goes seventh, then Smith will go eighth. Like, I, I, I think they're somewhat interchangeable when it comes to seven and eight, whichever, you know, whichever one Detroit doesn't want is who Miami will take. So we get to pick number nine. Um, first, I need to go ahead and select Jalen Waddle. We get to pick number nine and the Denver Broncos. Um, how can I say this nicely? Because I, I don't want to bury anyone's team on, on this mock draft. But um, outside of Bryce Callahan, the Broncos corners were good garbage um i i can't say the entire secondary was bad because kareem jackson was actually a pretty decent uh strong safety uh but they're and simmons is a beast as well uh but their cornerbacks i mean isang bassi and uh ojamudia and will parks are are not good corners when you have the opportunity to add an elite athlete like caleb farley you go ahead and do that um farley will line up opposite bryce callahan um, with those two get safeties and suddenly a weakness is a strength. So um, I know that there is some some discussions about Drew Locke and whether or not he's the quarterback. And and that's a whole nother discussion for a different video. And, you know, I think any quarterback would love to play in Denver because Denver has a lot of weapons. They just need a quarterback. Now, could that quarterback be Drew Locke, in, you know, this, this season coming up? Maybe he's improved. Who knows? I know that right now, their, my more pressing need for this team is their defense. You're in a division with the Kansas City Chiefs, um, and you have to have good corners, or else you, you'll never beat them. So I'll go ahead and give the Broncos um, Caleb Farley here. Now, here's where the draft gets a little interesting, right? Because the Dallas Cowboys do need a corner, right? But I don't believe that corner is Patrick Sertan the second, right? Um, I'm not the biggest fan of Patrick Sertan the second. Um, you know, granted, he, he won a whole bunch of awards, so clearly someone likes him. But I, I'm not that big of a fan of him. I believe that on his 2019 tape, um, he struggled with bigger receivers when it comes to slant routes and over routes and deep overs with crossing his face. He didn't really break on the ball enough for me. Um, but that's not why I wouldn't draft him. I think Patrick Sertan the second is the exact kind of same corner as Trayvon Diggs. Uh, they both played at Alabama. And if I'm putting a corner opposite Trayvon Diggs, I want that corner to have elite athleticism because Trayvon Diggs doesn't. Um, and so if I could have gotten Caleb Farley here, um, I would have had him at 10. Uh, but because he's not here, I'm going to actually move down, right? So I'm going to move down. Uh, so what I'm going to do is um, the Arizona Cardinals are going to call me uh, and they're going to want to come up to get the Dallas Cowboys pick. So Arizona is going to offer their one and their two for 10. So uh, we'll go ahead and send the offer over and the Cowboys uh, are going to accept the offer here. Um, so as I said before, Dallas moving down from from 10 to 16 is, is strictly because um, I believe that 
uh, Patrick Sertan isn't really the kind of corner that they want. Um, Patrick Peterson is not not in Arizona anymore. Uh, but if he's smart, he'll move to safety like we saw with Charles Woodson and like we're seeing with Kareem Jackson um, in Denver. Um, the Cardinals did acquire Robert Alford to play cornerback in 2019. He's missed two full seasons with a broken leg and a pec tear. Um, haven't really gotten their return on the investment. Byron Murphy, on the other hand, was a pretty good return on investment from the 2019 draft. He played 572 snaps at slot, only 170 outside. They have that position solidified at the slot. Patrick Sertan showing up to become number one as a rookie will definitely help this team, especially with 36-year-old Jonathan Joseph walking. Um, now, I would, re -try I would try to re-sign Dre Kirkpatrick um, just because that just gives me some depth at corner and, and, a, and a veteran type leader. I'm in the secondary, but I mean, I wouldn't extend anything like longer than two years to Dre Kirkpatrick. Um, so I would just do that just to just to cover myself. So um, I would have the Arizona Cardinals game coming up to select Patrick Sertan the second. 11, the New York Giants are on the clock. Um, I'm sure the Giants would have loved to have a wide receiver here, uh, but they're all gone. Um, Gettleman has come out and said that that he um, he is excited to move forward with uh, Evan Ingram. I just don't see how you can say that with a straight face when he had the fourth most drops in the league and the most by a tight end. He was the fourth most targeted tight end with 102 targets. Tight ends in this system get attention, but Ingram is set to hit free agency um, in 2022. And um, I believe that this player um, could replace him in kind of the same role. Um, as I said before, you want a receiver here, but there is no receiver here. So you have to take the next best pass catcher who some people believe is actually the best pass catcher. So um, the, the, the discussion between uh, Smith, Waddle, Chase and Pitts is whoever you believe is the best pass catcher. Um, and some people believe it's Kyle Pitts. Some people believe that it's Smith. Some people believe it's Chase. Some believe it's Waddle. Um, I tend to believe that, uh, that that it's Jamar Chase. And then it goes Smith, Waddle, and then Pitts. So I'm going to give the New York football giants Kyle Pitts here um, just because they need offensive weapons. I mean, you, you, ha you didn't have Saquon Barkley last year. Saquon's going to come back healthy. You eventually have to pay Saquon. Evan Ingram's probably going to walk. You still don't have any good receivers. Um, honestly. Um, so I would try to dip my toes in free agency next weekend or, you know, next week, uh, next Wednesday, the 17th, when the league year starts and see if you can potentially get a receiver or two that can help you out. But um, the lack of attention that's been paid to their skill positions, um, is a little concerning when it comes to Dave Gettleman, but honestly, it's not surprising because Dave Gettleman did the same thing with the Carolina Panthers and just never paid attention to skill players. Um, so um it's always hey cam cam newton needs this nope we're gonna take shaq thompson you know it's just you know cam newton needs offensive line nope we're gonna take vernon butler it was always just defense no matter what um and and that's what it's kind of been for the new york giants so um kyle pitts is the pick here so pick 11 or pick 12 excuse me um the san francisco 49ers um are awful in the secondary um JC Horn is a dog. I mean, JC Horn is a dog. We all know about the Auburn tape where he was just bullying people and just busting through blocks and pile driving people. It was, it's some of the best tape you will ever see from a cornerback. Um, San Francisco needs that in their secondary. Akello Weatherspoon and Jason Verrett had some pretty good seasons. They both uh, play most of their snaps outside, but I think adding uh, JC Horn to be a Richard Sherman type corner for this team um, is, is, a, is a good thing. I think he fits in perfectly where he doesn't have to go into a situation, you know, like a Caleb Farley or, or specifically a Patrick Sertan, I'll say, because Caleb Farley does have Bryce Callahan and some good safeties behind him um, in Denver. But Patrick Sertan is going into a corner, into a position where he's going to be baptized at corner. He is going to be baptized as a number one corner as a rookie. Uh, well, J.C. Horn doesn't exactly have to go through that because they have Akella Weatherspoon and Jason Verrett, two veterans who are, are pretty decent corners. Uh, but I think um, you still have to build on that because um, their their secondary just really wasn't that good. It can get better. So we'll go ahead and give the San Francisco 49ers J.C. Horn. Um, the Los Angeles Chargers are on the clock. And much like Cincinnati, if you want to keep your quarterback upright, your young quarterback upright, I should say, you need to protect him. Now, 
weapons are nice but if you can get the ball you know but you know weapons are nice when you can get the ball out but if you can't get the ball to those weapons then everything is in vain um so in 2019 ray sean slater played 11 games didn't allow a sack he was preseason all american preseason all big 10 and the outland trophy watch list uh, in 2020 but he did opt out in 2020 but who cares he shut down chase young literally shut him down and he has short arms like <laughs> that that makes it even more special um he doesn't have these 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 long you know tyrant smith arms he has these little t-rex arms and he makes it work he didn't allow a sack now he ran it he ran his 40 and it was a four uh, it was a, it was a four eight or so or it was somewhere around that it was less than a five from what i saw and that might pump him up higher than 13. he killed the bench press he was squatting the, these these insane amount of weights um he's athletic and you know he can play almost any position on the offensive line and he should be protecting herbert's blind side for the next decade um daniel jeremiah posted uh something on twitter um a few days ago um, about ray sean slater and i replied to it um with you know uh, from draft day where where um sonny weaver jr gets the thing and it says and vante mac hands it to him and it's like vante mac no matter what i did it and i said ray sean slater no matter what if you have the opportunity to to get a ray sean slater if you're not getting a quarterback take ray sean slater because ray sean slater is a hell of an offensive lineman prospect um, and I think the Chargers are going to strike gold here because um, Minnesota would love to have would love to have uh, Rayshon Slater to play uh, offensive tackle, but the problem is Minnesota can't find anyone to move up with because, of course, Arizona just moved up with Dallas. Um, New York's not trying to trade away from Kyle Pitts, and San Francisco has J.C. Moore fall into their laps, so no one wants to move. Um, so Minnesota's kind of stuck here with their hands tied. So they, Minnesota is going to miss out on Rayshon Slater. Um, and with missing out on Rayshon Slater, Minnesota is going to try to get out of here. So um, New England doesn't really want to move because New England will get their guy wherever they are. Um, Dallas doesn't want to move because Dallas wants to get their guy as well. Um, now, Las Vegas is probably a little nervous here, right? Because... Las Vegas is trying to decide whether or not they want to jump Dallas, right? So, because there is a player on the board right here named Christian Barmore, who played defensive tackle, um, and the Raiders need a defensive tackle. Um, the Raiders have some nice pieces on defense, in my opinion, but they gave up 478 points. They have to get better, specifically on the interior. You know, DT has, has been an issue and they tried to fill that hole with Malik Collins from the Cowboys. But come on, no dice, right? So they jumped Dallas in my mock here. So I'll have them, we'll have them do a trade here. We'll have the Las Vegas Raiders come up with the Minnesota Vikings. And we'll do, we'll give up 17 for 14. And we'll give up 80. So giving up a third round pick to jump up three spots but remember this is your biggest need so i know some teams will feel like or some people will feel like well that's a little rich or you could possibly do four um you could try to do four see if they'll take it if they don't um it'll it'll just be three so we'll give up a three because that makes the most sense according to the trade chart so um las vegas is going to jump dallas here to get to 14 and when we send the offer over to minnesota minnesota um, is going to accept the offer they pick up an additional third las vegas goes ahead and they they take christian barmore he slides in play three technique between the guard and the tackle and the raiders prosper so i mentioned new england not wanting to move down right because new england knows what what a lot of people know about dallas dallas needs a linebacker badly but so does new england um, and I think that New England um, could sit here and, and potentially take Micah Parsons or Jeremiah Awusu Um I, I still think it's a little early for Nick Bolton. And I do believe that Zayvon Collins is a Sam linebacker who just hits people. I don't really think he's a coverage guy. Um, so you have four different linebackers you could potentially take here. 
Um, but I remember early on in the draft world when Micah Parsons was mocked as a top 10 pick. And then people realize that he's an off-the-ball linebacker with character concerns. Now, now I'm not trying to bury Micah Parsons here because I think Micah Parsons has some pretty nice tape. Uh, First-round linebacker tape for sure. I just don't know if I'm ready to invest money and high draft capital into a guy, um, you know, with these character concerns, you know, with the bullying and the the Sandusky, you know, jokes when, you know, with, with teammates and things like that. I'm just, I'm not here for that. Um, but whichever team drafts him has to have a system in place that will allow him to succeed on the field and off the field. Um, he opted out of 2020 and Penn State fell off a cliff. He's valuable. He's right. Up, he, he, I mean, he, he he has it all, but he has to get it right up top. And if he does, he could be a force to be reckoned with. Or he could flame out. It's up to him. But I think a coach like Bill Belichick, who really doesn't give a damn about your feelings, um, is the perfect kind of coach for Micah Parsons. Not to say that Bill Belichick is going to, like, discipline him. But, you know, a coach that that's not going not gonna to take any BS from you, you know, Bill Belichick treated Tom Brady the same way he treated Matthew Slater. Like, you know, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, who knows? But it's a consistent treatment, um, and no one gets treated like they're special um, in New England. So we'll have them go ahead and select Micah Parsons, the linebacker out of Penn State. So the Dallas Cowboys are on the clock here at pick 16. Um, and offensive tackle is definitely a need with Tyron Smith's uh, injury history and missing a whole bunch of games. Uh Missing like 16 or so games. Um, and then Lyle Collins having hip issues and being overweight coming into the 2020 season and then eventually going to injure reserve and then having to play Terrence Steele and Brandon Knight um, at your tackle positions and really that bombed your season along with losing your quarterback. But um, I believe the Cowboys could go offense or, or defense here. Um, I, I think if a receiver's here, I, I definitely believe the Cowboys would go receiver because Michael Gallup is in the last year of his deal. And it doesn't make sense to pay another receiver $15 million. It, that doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, even though the cap's going to balloon, I do understand that with the new TV deals. Um, I just don't see how it makes sense to pay your t technically your third receiver now um, top dollar. Let him walk and get money from somewhere else. Um, and then you could draft a receiver, draft a Kyle Pitts. Um, if you feel like you, know, you want to stay at 10 and not move down, you could take Rayshon Slater there. You could take Christian Barmore there. Um, it's a lot of different options for the Cowboys here, but um, a lot of people believe the Cowboys' biggest need is corner, and I, I agree to an extent because really you need bodies at corner, um, but I think the Cowboys' biggest need isn't corner or offensive tackle. The Cowboys' biggest need is linebacker, and it isn't even close. Leighton Van Der Esch has neck issues, the same issues we knew he had in college. He missed seven games in 2018 and 2016 back at Boise State, seven games in 2019. And then in 2020, he missed six games with a broken collarbone. He is injury prone. It is what it is. When he's on and when he's healthy, he's good. He's a very good linebacker. He's a Pro Bowl linebacker when he was on in, in 2018, but it's kind of falling off a cliff. Now, the only issue with him is injury concern, in my opinion. Now, the other linebacker, Jalen Smith, on the other hand, is atrocious. Jalen Smith it was might have been one of the worst linebackers I had seen on film last season. He was horrific. There were people in Cowboys Twitter and in social media who in week one and week two, week three, were posting, you know, clips and game pass from all 22 of Jalen Smith showing no effort, spinning out of plays, and national media didn't pick up on it. No one talked about it. It wasn't until Daniel Jeremiah picked up on it after the Browns game where, where Dak Prescott led the, led the Cowboys back, scored three two-point conversions, got them back within, got them back in the game, and all the defense had to do was make one stop. Odell runs an end around for 50 yards. They win the, the Browns win the game or whatever. But Jalen Smith was not running on the play. He, he was jogging. And Daniel Jeremiah said it looks like he's running with the piano on his back because there was no effort there. And when I see that, that lets me know that you don't want to be here, right? David Cutcliffe joined, speaking of Jer Daniel Jeremiah, he joined uh, Jeremiah's podcast, uh, Move the Sticks, you know, hosted by DJ and Bucky. Uh, and those two, again, haven't held back on their Jalen Smith criticism. Um, Cutcliffe said he sees so many players who have a love for the game in college 
but then they wanted to showcase the fact that they have money and it becomes less about football and when he said that i immediately thought about jalen smith right because see jalen smith is about the brand and his sunglasses and 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 being business partners with jerry jones and it doesn't seem like it's about football anymore um he's a great story but the story has gotten old his run defense grade according to pff was 47 meaning he was making a bunch of tackles down the field he was awful against the run we saw that in every game um but people see his tackles and they they think that oh well he made a whole bunch of tackles he's good when you look at the leading tacklers in the nfl i guarantee you eight out of the ten are middle linebackers or will linebackers because all they do is tackle but but the real stat is tackles for loss Let, let's look at that because those are nowhere near where they were in 2018. He's just not a good, he's not a good football player. Um, he's declined annually. He's gotten worse each year he's played. Um, I just feel like it's time to to cut bait with Jalen Smith. Save $7 million. You're going to have a lot of veterans on, on the market uh, with, with you know, <laughs> March 17th being D-Day with this cap number and people having to get cut. So um, if I'm the Cowboys here, I'm just going to go ahead and go ahead and take actually Jalen's replacement which is ironically is out of Notre Dame I'm going to go ahead and take Jeremiah Awusu Kormoa um, to play linebacker for the Cowboys a super athletic linebacker kind of small could play safety as well but he can cover he hits uh, he's a really good linebacker and he loves football um, and that that's what you want in a in a team in a in a, in a linebacker so the tricky thing about Jalen Smith though is will Jerry Jones be willing to cut bait with him because when Jerry loves you, Jerry loves you. So um, the next pick uh, is the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, the Minnesota Vikings knew that they couldn't get Rayshon Slater um, where they were at 14. So they went ahead and moved down to 17 because they also knew that Christian Barmore, Micah Parsons, and Jeremiah Usu Kormo were, were all going to go prior to their pick. That allows the Minnesota Vikings to stay where they are at 17 and still get an offensive tackle prospect so on the board right now it's Jalen mayfield tevin jenkins out of oklahoma state mayfield out of michigan darisaw out of virginia tech and sam cosby out of texas so um i would go ahead and give the minnesota vikings christian darisaw here darisaw has zero versatility and that's okay because he's a starting left tackle for the next decade he's tough he's physical his motor never stops his hand movement is what i love it's so rare to see him like grab uh, he, he he's a beast when it comes to hand fighting um he watching tape over 2019 and 2020 you see his consistency i mean now he still has some room to grow um so he he's a physical beast and he hasn't even touched the nfl weight room so add some more muscles a little more technique and then he can protect kirk cousins blind side uh you know after riley Reed probably walks after the 2021 season but Darisaw and the 2018 second rounder out of Pitt, Brian O'Neill, will solidify the tackle positions for Minnesota probably for the next eight to 10 years. So um, I would go ahead and, and give the Minnesota Vikings uh, Christian Darisaw here. So right now it's pick 18. The Miami Dolphins are on the clock. Um, the Miami Dolphins um, do need an offensive tackle. They also need a linebacker. They need a running back and probably an edge rusher. Um, so. I think the Miami Dolphins are, are going to be wise here because there are a few teams in the back half of this draft, most notably Washington, Chicago, New Orleans, you know, um, and, and Pittsburgh are all teams who could potentially still need a quarterback. Now, um, I believe Chicago is so desperate for a quarterback that they will give up anything <laughs> to get a quarterback because they know what their problem is. They, you know, they Chicago wasn't a bad team. Chicago has weapons. They tagged, um, I believe they tagged Allen Robinson. They, they, um, you know, they, they have a pretty decent run game. They have a very good defense. And it just seems like that defense kind of, if the offense is rolling, the defense is rolling. If the offense is half assing it, the defense is going to half ass it. And that's what it seems like. Um, so I think what you have to do is you have to change the, the, the mindset of this team and the mindset of this quarterback position. So I'm going to execute a trade here um, as the Chicago Bears. I'm going to move up uh, with Chicago. Chicago is going to move up from 20 um, to 18. 
uh, with the Miami Dolphins. And Chicago is going to give up 20 for 18. And they're going to give up a fifth round pick, which is 165, which e which evens out on the trade chart. We're going to send the offer. Um, the Dolphins are going to accept the offer to pick up an additional fifth round pick, which they could possibly use on a running back. Um, Chicago Bears are going to make that jump. They're going to go ahead and select Mac Jones, the quarterback out of Alabama. Um, now, the knock, of course, on Mac Jones um, is, is that Mac Jones had a lot of weapons at Alabama. And ironically, that that's kind of that was kind of I don't want to say that was the same knock on, on um, Joe Burrow, but Joe Burrow had a lot of weapons as well. Um, I think we have to be careful, you know, with the idea that because a player has a bunch of weapons and a good team around them, that they're not a good player. I don't agree with that necessarily. Um, I think I think that applies to Kyle Trask, but, but I don't think that applies to Mac Jones here. Um, I just think that with how needy teams are for quarterbacks, um, I think that Mac Jones will end up going in the first round, but I don't see a team taking a chance on a Kyle Trask. Um, so the Bears, again, are back on it. Like I said, back on the clock to get a quarterback um, because they never recover from passing on Deshaun Watson and Patrick Mahomes. Um, now, like I said, the team is very good, uh, but Trubisky was 33rd, according to PFF, out of 38. You know how bad he – that means there were only five quarterbacks worse than you, but 32 that were better than you. That that That's how that's how bad you are. So, over his career, he's ranked 27, 33rd, and 28th. He's just not a good starting quarterback. Taysom Hill is a higher-ranked quarterback than Mitchell Trubisky. Trubisky stinks. So, as I said before, Deshaun Watson, Russell Wilson, those names are circulating as well. But you could keep some of your pieces, keep a lot of your draft picks, continue to build your team um, going into the future of 2022 and 23 and 24 and things like that. Don't mortgage your future for a quarterback if you feel like Mac Jones can be a guy that you can have for cheap for the next five years along with keeping your draft capital and your players. Um, so... I would go ahead and do that because you got to pay Mitch Trubisky and I wouldn't pay Mitch Trubisky a bit, monopoly money. I think he's an awful quarterback. So um, the Washington football team, um, while I know some people will be kind of disappointed that they didn't get a quarterback here, um, I think it's very possible that they could jump up, you know, <laughs> you know, 10 spots or something and, and go up and get a quarterback. But according to my mock, I have four going in the top four. So you got to give up quite a few picks if you're, you know, if you're Washington, even just to get to four. So um, Washington wasn't able to get a quarterback. Um, and I don't believe that Washington is. I think Washington's OK with not drafting their quarterbacks. Um, they just kind of luck into them. Um, now, they do need a quarterback badly. But as I said, Mac Jones went to Chicago the pick before they can get a quarterback in free agency and have that quarterback battle it out with with a Heineke. Um, that quarterback could be Cam Newton, Andy Dalton, Mitch Trubisky, um, or hell, you could get Joe Flacco for a year. I mean, there are options, um, but I just know that the Washington football team is in a position pretty much unlike any other team because they're a team that that's not great, but they're not terrible. So it's going to be hard for them to ever end up getting a quarterback unless they mortgage some of their future to get one because because you don't suck enough to pick top 10, but you don't want to give up your future. So it's kind of it's kind of hard to, to look at their quarterback room or what they want to do at quarterback. So I think it's going to be a veteran, whether that's Cam, Dalton, uh, hell, Mitchell, Trubisky, like I said, Flacco. There are options. Uh, the offensive line was pretty good, though. Um, you know, Wes and Chase Roulier and Morgan Moses and Brandon Scherf, they were very good. Brandon Scherf was so good he got tagged. <laughs> like They didn't want to let him go. Um, they're good in the trenches on offense and defense. They are just weak at skill positions. They're weak at corner. They're weak at receiver. Um, and they're, they're weak at running back. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and give them Rashad Bateman, the wide receiver out of um, Minnesota, to pair it with Terry McLaurin. Bateman stands 6'1", weighs 210 in 31 games. He had 47, 147 catches, uh, 2,300 yards. Uh, at Minnesota, and he's a great option to pair opposite of uh, of Terry McLaurin. So, um, at pick twenty, the Miami Dolphins um, got their receiver earlier. Um, they went ahead and uh, they went ahead and took their receiver um, early, and then at pick twenty, they're going to go ahead and get Sam Cosme, uh, the offensive tackle. Um, I, I just feel like at this point, 
um, you have to invest money and invest high high picks into your offensive line if you want to a tongue of Iloa to be able to to stand. Um, I know that they went ahead and and they got Austin Jackson, but Austin Jackson really is not a a, a good offensive lineman. I'm sorry. Um, if you want to get the ball to Jalen Waddle, you have to keep Tua upright. Um, so the Dolphins um, did, you know, trade what, what I would equate to a bag of sunflower seeds for Isaiah Wilson. Um, I don't know if I trust that just yet. I believe that Ryan Flores is a very good coach um, who can get the best out of Isaiah Wilson. It's just about Isaiah Wilson wanting to get the best out of Isaiah Wilson. Um, Jesse Davis was a decent tackle who played over a, a thousand snaps. Um, he'll be 30 this year. Um, again, it's just too much uncertainty at tackle. I would cover myself and kind of fill that hole. Um, so I have the Dolphins taking Sam Cosme, 30 plus games at offensive tackle, 14 at right, 21 at left. Um, Cosme at times does have, you know, he kind of gets high on his blocks and he needs to play stronger, especially in pass pro. Uh, basically get your weight up, which he'll do in an NFL weight room. Um, but as I said before, because of the flexibility, he had a left and right tackle at, at Texas. Um, I think he could play either position for the Miami Dolphins. Um, so we'll go ahead and give them Sam Cosme here. Um, and the, the Indianapolis Colts will be on the clock here. And the player that that's still kind of sitting on the board here that's kind of sticking out like a sore thumb is Quiddy Pay. Um, I just think with Justin Houston's age and, you you know, you have to begin to add new blood into this D-line room. Now, the edge rusher uh, free agent class is pretty deep, but if you want to save your money, just draft Quiddy Pay. Line him up at left end and let him prosper. Um, I I look at Quiddy Pay the way I look at like a like a uh, a, a Honda or a Toyota, right? Quiddy Pay is reliable. He's not quite the Ferrari or the Lambo, you know, or or, or the uh, Maserati that um <laughs> that Chase Young is, but he's a nice Toyota. He, he's the car that 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 you rent, you know, when you go on family vacations. He's the minivan. And the minivan will get you from point A to point B, and you'll be okay. That that that's what I see Quiddy Pay as. Um, he's consistent. He doesn't really do anything special, in my opinion. He's just a very solid edge rusher, um, and that's what Justin Houston was. So you're replacing it. Uh, you're replacing him for five years for cheap. So pick twenty two. The Tennessee Titans are on the clock here. The Titans are going to go ahead and select Jalen Phillips. Now, Tennessee did have Clowney on a one-year deal, and he shined for the Titans as a pass rusher in both their base and nickel packages. Um, with the cap going down, I just don't see a team signing Clowney for what he made last year, which was about $12 million. Um, so unless Clowney wants to take less money to come back to Tennessee, I just don't see where he's going to fit on any team. Um, you can't demand money like that with the cap going down. So um, Phillips uh, possesses elite athleticism. Um, he could stand up as an edge rush linebacker in Tennessee. He was the number one prospect in 2017 uh, coming out of high school. But in 2018, he, rumors swirled that he would retire due to concussions. He transferred from UCLA to Miami. He set out a year, then played one season at the U. Now, he's a scary prospect because he's had three concussions. Some might even say four or five, four, even probably more than that. But the one we're, we're concrete on are, uh, are the three concussions that he's had. And that's before he even got to the pros. But concussions are, aren't the only issue for him. An ankle injury limited him as a freshman. He had a few surgeries on his wrist after he got hit by a car while on a moped. Um, medicals could definitely push him to the second round, but I think teams will bet on his traits and his athleticism, much like they'll do with the other Miami pass rusher we'll talk about later. Uh, but yeah, the, those three concussions kind of concern me because you haven't even managed to go up against you know some of the best tackles and the best guards in the NFL um, who will beat you down. And I don't know if he, if he can, if he sets to handle that. I think if you send him up as a rush linebacker off the edge, I let him, let him use his athleticism to bend and get under tackles. That'll be good for him. But, um, that, that, those concussions kind of concern me. Um, if I'm an NFL team, so we'll go ahead and give them Jalen Phillips. Um, the New York jets are on the clock here. Um, the New York jets did hire Robert Saleh to, to be their head coach. Um, and Robert Saleh comes from San Francisco, um, who ran the ball to keep the defense fresh, right? So 
the issue is teams don't value running backs anymore. They believe that running backs are a dime a dozen. You know, let's look at Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones had 1,100 yards and averaged five and a half yards per carry. Five and a half yards per carry, and he's a free agent. Teams don't care about running backs. That That's so disrespectful. So I think the Jets will dip their toes in the running back position on night one of the draft. Um, as I said, Robert Saleh, you know, runs the ball, keeps the defense fresh. Um, the Jets will go ahead and pair Najee up with their quarterback, Zach Wilson, and have two key positions for the future. Um, if the Jets want to go out and potentially pay Aaron Jones, they could. That That's up to them. But I feel like it's not that I, I don't I don't believe in paying running backs a second contract. I believe in paying good players a second contract. I don't care what position you play. If you stink, I'm not going to pay you a second contract. But I, I can't say, hey, if you balled out and rushed for 4,000 and, and 4, yards and had a bunch of touchdowns in four seasons with me, and you're an asset to my team, I'm going to pay you regardless of the position that you play. The Cowboys, for example, had a lockdown corner in Byron Jones. He didn't get interception, so they let him walk. And their secondary was horrible. Like, those are things that you can't do. You can't sacrifice your team just because you don't want to pay something or you don't want to pay the value of a, of a particular position. Aaron Jones is more than worthy of a, of a second contract. He makes this team go. He, he They finally gave Aaron Rodgers a run game. And things like that make me, you know, kind of confuse me about the Packers because I can see why Aaron Rodgers would be upset whenever he goes on Pat McAfee's show or does any kind of interview or talks about his future because because the Packers do things that don't make sense when it comes to Aaron Rodgers. You finally give him a run game for one of the first times in his career. He had Ryan Grant. He had Fat Eddie Lacy who liked to eat Chinese food. You know, he... he, he he had a, a, a revolving door of running backs. You give him Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones shines for the Packers. You let Aaron Jones walk, and I guess you're letting him walk because you have A.J. Dillon. Um, but I just I just see things like that with the Packers, and I 100% get why Aaron Rodgers is frustrated with the with the front office. So, um, but we'll talk about the Packers in a few picks. So, um, the Jets uh, are going to go ahead and select Najee Harris. Um, pick 24, the Steelers are on the clock. Um, one of the massive things that, that, that one of the massive holes on the Steelers team has been the running back position. Um, you know, I guess the grass wasn't always greener on the other side, huh? You know, letting Le'Veon Bell walk is something the Steelers still are struggling with today. They never filled this position. Um, and, and when I say that, that goes back to the point I just made about Aaron Jones. You do not let good players walk regardless of their position. Do not let good players walk. Like, if you have a running back who's average and he's your starter for four years, fine, let him walk. But if you have a player that that is consistently at the top of the league in yards and, and touches and durability and things like that, you pay that player. I don't understand why we don't want to do that. So they never recovered. Ben is in his final year, I would assume. Um, give him a weapon who he can hand the ball off to. I know the Steelers use some help on the offensive line with a Pouncey retiring. Uh, but I, I believe that right now, according to according to my board, um, the best offensive player on the board is indeed Travis Etienne. So I will go ahead and take Travis Etienne. Um, and in the second round, if you want to come back and you want to replace uh, Pouncey with Creed Humphrey, you're more than welcome to do that. Uh, but I know Elijah Vera Tucker is a player on the board as well. That could be attractive to the Steelers. Um, but I think you have to take the best offensive skill position on the board and that's going to be Travis Etienne the running back out of Clemson so pick 25 as I mentioned before about keeping your rookie quarterback I'm um, upright if you want to actually enjoy your young quarterbacks protect them the team franchise Cam Robinson he's a very good center uh he's a very good tackle they have Brandon Linder who's a very good center um there's something there in terms of the offensive line pieces you throw in Tevin Jenkins to play tackle and things may be better. Um, and it has been confirmed that Jacksonville has spoken with Tevin um, as well. So I think we may be on to something. Um, Tevin wins the hand fights. He plays angry. Hell he, hell, he sent Joseph Osai into the Gatorade in a game. Pushed him right into the blue Gatorade. Um, some people believe he's, he, he'll be a better guard. Um, that's possible. Possibly slide him in an AJ Can. Uh, AJ Can's position and take his job at right guard. 
but I think there's some value in trying him at tackle just to see if he could solidify that position along with Cam Robinson. So uh, Jacksonville takes an offensive tackle to go ahead and keep their quarterback upright. So the Cleveland Browns are on the clock. They're going to select Aziz Ojalari, the defensive end um, or the edge rusher out of Georgia. Um, the Browns were in the J.J. Watt sweepstakes. Um, they're looking for another pass rusher opposite Miles Garrett since Olivier Vernon has hit free agency. Now, me personally, I would consider re-signing Olivier Vernon because of the run he went on in weeks 13 to 16. We have four sacks, uh, six quarterback hits, six tackles for loss. All those numbers in that time span were better than Miles Garrett, right? So he turned it up towards the end of the year. Now, the issue is his salary. How much are you willing to pay for Olivier Vernon? Is he willing to take a one-year deal? The cap has dropped. What like what what's he gonna want? I think he's gonna be in that same boat as Jadavian Clowney, where it's like, eh, you know, I want this, but teams can't do that. Like, so do you wanna take the seven million dollars that a team's gonna give you, or do you wanna sit out and wait till the cap balloons? Um, so I guess that 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 falls onto the shoulders of Olivier Vernon. Um, Aziz is still a little bit raw to me because he has like one pass rush move. Um, and that's not a bad thing in college, but in the pros, you definitely have to develop more moves. He's also not very good against the run either, but I have him as a top edge uh, rusher just because he's a pure pass rusher. Um, and he's going to a situation where he's going to be working with arguably the best rusher in the league who will definitely be able to, you know, work with him and, 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 you know, make him into a, and to mold that that raw prospect into a very good prospect. So we'll go ahead and give the Cleveland Browns Aziz Ojalari. So pick 27 is the Baltimore Ravens. Now on March 9th, Eric DaCosta was asked about Lamar Jackson's extension. And he went in one big circle about a car lot and buying cars, whatever that means. Now, I mentioned that because the discussion about Lamar Jackson for his entire life was if he could develop into an elite passer. Lamar Jackson won MVP of the NFL, and that's still a discussion. I don't think that's fair. So Lamar Jackson finished the season with 26 passing touchdowns. Not a bad season when you add on the fact that he had seven touchdowns on the ground. 33 total while completing 64% of his passes, which does come in at 27. And people see that and they don't think he's an elite passer. But I think we have to weigh the entire situation that Lamar Jackson is in, right? So when the Ravens run 11 personnel, um, which if you don't know is the one running back, one tight end, three receivers, right? They roll out Marquise Brown as the number one wide receiver along with Miles Boykin and Willie Sneed. Come on. Then they go out and they sign Des Bryant, who is older, you know, and and I, and I look at the receiving core and I, and I, I it, it annoys me because it's like, how dare you look at the Baltimore Ravens and say the quarterback can't be an elite passer when he has no one to throw to? I don't understand that. Like, every quarterback's not Tom Brady. Tom Brady made Wes Welker and Julian Edelman, and, and Gronk was a specimen. But Brady also had a guy like Randy Moss. You have to, you have to give a, a quarterback something to throw to. You have to, or the quarterback will not look good. You can't become an elite passer with these average, terrible weapons. Make zero sense. The Ravens have to, and I mean, it, it is it is paramount that they invest heavily into this wide receiver core because they already have their franchise guy. And the discussion shouldn't be about, hey, well, um, well when you go to the car lot and you see a, a, a Mercedes and then you see a Bentley, and you, and I don't want to hear that. It's a yes or no question. Are you going to pay Lamar Jackson? The answer should be yes. And on top of that, it should say, we're also going to add weapons around him because you gave him Mark Andrews. You had a bus with Hayden Hurst, who's not even on the team anymore. You, you, you have to hit on these skill positions. You have to. I have them taking Terrace Marshall, the wide receiver out of LSU. Um, you, you have to. It's imperative that you give this guy some weapons because if you don't, you're going to pay him. And the narrative is going to be that he's not a good player when he's throwing to Miles Boykin. You know, if you want to, if you want to give him Terrace Marshall and hell, let's play Devin Duvernay, like, and, and give him some some reps at receiver because what you have right now just ain't working. And I'm, I'm really passionate about this topic because the, the, I, I, the 
when no one's saying it, right? And we know why they're criticizing Lamar Jackson. It's the same reason they criticized Dak Prescott, the same reason they criticized Warren Moon. We know why they're doing it. Same reason they criticized Michael Vick. These players cannot develop into elite passers, but you don't give them any weapons. Dak Prescott got his weapons, and no one's talking about Dak Prescott as a passer anymore because he got weapons. Michael Vick had no weapons in Atlanta. And everyone talks about how he wasn't an elite passer. He was just a runner. Give Lamar Jackson weapons. And I guarantee you he will shine. We're seeing it with him and Mark Andrews. 28, the Saints. Um, New Orleans has to upgrade their secondary, specifically their corners. Because statistically, Janoris Jenkins was the best corner on the team. And he's going to be 33 this season. Um, now, he has 2021 and 2022 left on his deal, meaning he'll he'll be almost 35 by the time his deal finishes. Um, Chauncey Gardner-Johnson can develop into a solid starter out of the slot. That's where most of his snaps came. And Marshawn Lattimore has declined with each year he's been in the league. I mean, that's not to be disrespectful. That is 100% the truth, according to, uh, to uh, statistics. So um, they have to go corner here. And on the board right now, we have Greg Newsom, Eric Stokes, Aaron Robinson, uh, Kelvin Joseph, who is probably one of my <laughs> Kelvin Joseph is one of my favorite corners. We're not going to do a second round mock or anything like that. Um, but Kev Kelvin Joseph is a rapper named Boss Man Fat. We'll talk about him later. But Kelvin Joseph is one of my favorite uh, prospects in the draft. But we're not going to take Kelvin Joseph or Aaron Robinson, who's a slot corner, um, you know, or Eric Stokes. We're going to go ahead and take Greg Newsom the second um, out of Northwestern. He fits the measurables for a DBs the Saints would like. It's also been confirmed that he has met with the Saints. Um, and according to my mock, you're in a division with Justin Fields and Trey Lance. And then Tom Brady is still walking around um, as well. You have to upgrade your secondary. Um, they tag Marcus Williams on March 9th. Um, and he's their safety moving forward. Malcolm Jenkins is still there as well. Get you another corner that can help you out. Um, and that can solidify the other corner position opposite um, Marshawn Lattimore with Chauncey Gardner Johnson in the slot. Pick 29 on the clock are, uh, will be the Green Bay Packers. Um, so you almost want to go receiver here, or not receiver, excuse me. You almost want to go running back here just because of what they did to Aaron Jones. Um, but the Packers have a bigger issue, right? Kevin King. Kevin King is responsible for, for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers going to the Super Bowl. And that, that's it. It's Kevin King. It's not the refs. It's Kevin King being cooked like a turkey. So the Packers have to get better at corner. They have to invest in corner because if they don't invest in corner, they're going to have the same issues they, they've been having. We saw it a few years ago when, when the, the Packers were in the NFC Championship game and Ladarius Gunter got beat like a drum. They, they have to invest in that corner opposite the number one corner. Um, now, what I will say, though, is, is Aaron Robinson – can help the Packers get better at corner, but he played a lot of slot. And that's okay because teams run nickel now. Um, so if I'm the Packers, I would I would double dip at corner, come back at 62 and possibly take Elijah Molden or Ifeyatsu Melifanwu or Tyson Campbell or Paulson Adebo um, and put that person outside, Aaron Robinson in the slot, and then Jair Alexander, who is locked down, put him um, you know, as the number one corner and, and thrive with a good secondary. Um, especially in the division that you're going to have to go up against a guy like Devontae Smith and Tyrell Williams and, and guys like that who you have to face. Chicago having another quarterback as well. Minnesota having Justin Jefferson and Adam Thielen and Irv Smith Jr. Um, you want to have a secondary that can match up with those guys. Um, so the, if the Packers want to come back and get a running back later in the draft, they can get Trey Sermon, Jarrett Patterson, Puka Williams. There's a bunch of different running backs that they could get. Um, so pick 30, um, we're going to have, um, Nick Bolton going to Buffalo. Um, the first thing people will notice about Nick Bolton is his size. Now the Missouri website, you know, you never want to listen to the Mizzou uh, or, or to the school sites because they inflate the height and the weight of the players. Um, that's why I'm really upset that we didn't get a combine because we, we don't really get the the actual measurements of players until pro days and workouts and things like that. So it's kind of a mess. But um, like I said, the first thing you notice about Nick Bolton is his size. Some people say he's six foot. I think he's 5'11", 5'10", um, 232 pounds at linebacker. 
Um, Bolton is a monster when he's untouched. He is a very good blitzer. Um, you see things on tape where he gets lost. Uh, he doesn't have a long. He doesn't have long speed. Um, I know he has to become a better tackler as well, but the effort that he shows in the Alabama tape makes him a first rounder, in my opinion. Now, if you didn't watch the Alabama tape and you only watched the Georgia tape, you might think he's a second rounder because the Georgia tape was pretty bad. But uh, the Alabama tape was was amazing. Um, it, it was it was just a bad game. I think he is um, he's going to be a um, a very good linebacker who can who can play on the outside. Um, I don't think he's he's going to be a, a very good uh, middle linebacker just because of his size. And you, you really want your middle linebackers to be that that larger linebacker. So like in Buffalo, that would be um, that would be Edmonds who, who would play um, that that particular um, linebacker position. If you wanted to line Nick Bolton up at, you know, at, at the at will linebacker or something like that and see if he can just get get a clean shot. Um, on runners and on receivers coming across the middle on on like um, on slant routes and, and running backs coming out the backfield. I think that's where he would thrive at the wheel position where he can get to be untouched um, and then let Edmonds just continue to play the middle. Um, I don't know what you do with Matt Milano um, and things like that, but I think Nick Bolton is is a need for the for the Buffalo Bills. So we'll go ahead and give them Nick Bolton. Pick 31, Kadarius Tony. Um, the wide receiver out of Florida. The Chiefs hit a home run last year with Clyde Edwards and Lair out of LSU. Um, I have the rich getting richer. Uh, I, I know the AFC West is just sick of this, but the only team who's ready for the Chiefs is probably Denver with with acquiring uh, Caleb Farley um, and adding that with you know um, with Kareem Jackson and Justin Simmons and Bryce Callahan, and then probably di double dipping again because you know Michael Ojemudia is whatever, but I don't think he's a, a starting corner in the NFL um everyone including the Chiefs um knows that Kadarius Tony can be dangerous um on the field but he can also be dangerous off the field because Kadarius Tony loves guns um and I know people will be like hey, well you know I love guns too but yeah but yeah you're also not going to the NFL to make millions of dollars right so um he loves guns um and he brandished a gun at someone on the Florida campus it was an airsoft gun thankfully uh, so he had those altercations on campus and he got pulled over in 2018 with a fully loaded um, assault rifle in his car. Um, but then the cops knew who he was and decided that it was open carry. So they let him go. Um, he's also a rapper named Young Joka. Um, like I said, Joka isn't quite as good as Kelvin Joseph's name, the cornerback out of Kentucky. Kelvin Joseph is boss man fat, you know, so. We got rappers in the in the draft class, but he has some durability issues. Tony missed four games in 2017 because of a shoulder uh, and because of shin injuries, and that ended up lasting him the whole season. Um, he suffered a left shoulder injury and missed five games in 2019 as well. Um, now, he doesn't have the long speed of Tyree Kill, but he's shifty. Um, he gets the ball in his hands, and he is dangerous. Uh, he showed up in 2020 uh, with 89 touches uh, between catches and carries for 1,100 yards and 11 touchdowns. Um, you know, so I guess you can say after, after his, uh, his, his awful off the field stuff, he came out guns blazing in 2020. Right. So, but yeah, all in all, he's a, he's a very good prospect. He just has to get his head on straight. And, and I, I don't like the idea though, that some scouts and GMs feel like, oh, well, this person likes to do this as a hobby. Therefore they don't care enough about football. I think that's bull. Um, I, I think that if when you show up, you show up to practice, you show up to meetings, you show up to play. If you do that on time and you want to wrap off the field, that's fine. Damian Lillard shows up, hits shots in Portland, wins games and wraps like that's OK. You can do that. You can have a hobby, but I need to make sure that you love football. And if you love football, your hobby won't deter me from drafting you, you having AR 15s in your in your vehicle will deter me from drafting you, but because that's just something up top that's just not clicking. Um, so, uh, but Kadarius Tony is a is a good prospect, and I think Andy Reid is the perfect coach that can you know work with them and get the best out of them. So, um, with the final pick and mock draft 1.0 for uh, for me, uh, I have the Bucks selecting Gregory Rousseau, the defensive end out of Miami. Ugh, I have to sigh when I talk about Rousseau because. Rousseau is one of the most frustrating prospects um, 
that I think I've ever seen, right? Because Russo has the traits, right? The, he has traits that'll get him in the first round. And I'm pretty confident it gets him higher than 32. Um, he's 6'7", 265. He also had 15 sacks in one season with Miami. Now, people see those numbers and think that he's an elite pass rusher. I don't believe that he is because he's incredibly inexperienced. He has really long arms that allow him to get leverage. Um, but a lot of his sacks came from rushing over the center, which is odd. Um, but whatever, he was a 265-pound defensive tackle. Um, but I don't think he does anything well. But I think his traits and those long arms and the ability to play the run with those arms um, will get him into the first round. Like I said, probably higher than 32. Um, but now if there is a staff that I would trust to pull greatness out of a player like Gregory Rousseau, it is Casey Rogers, the defensive line coach, and Todd Bowles, defensive coordinator in Tampa Bay. So um, I would go ahead and, and trust them to, to pull that out of Gregory Rousseau. So the draft has been finalized. We're going to save the draft as YouTube mock 1.0. We'll save that draft and we'll run it back down from the top. We have Trevor Lawrence going number one, Zach Wilson going number two, Carolina jumping up to three to select Justin Fields, Atlanta taking uh, Trey Lance. So I have four quarterbacks going in the top four, Penny Sewell to Cincinnati, Eagles getting a receiver, which they need badly. I prefer that over a tight end. I'll give them Jamar Chase. Devontae Smith to Detroit. Miami selecting Jalen Waddle. Caleb Farley going to Denver to play opposite Bryce Callahan. And uh, with Justin Simmons and Kareem Jackson. The Arizona Cardinals trading up with Dallas to take Patrick Sertan the second. The Giants taking Kyle Pitts. J.C. Horn to San Francisco. Ray Sean Slater to Los Angeles. Uh, the Raiders selecting Christian Barmore after a trade up with Minnesota to jump Dallas. Micah Parsons. Going 15 to New England. Jeremiah Awusu Koromoa going 16 to Dallas. Uh, Christian Derisaw to Minnesota. Mac Jones to Chicago at 18 because Chicago jumped from 20 to 18 with Miami to jump Washington um, so they could get their quarterback. Rashad Bateman going to Minnesota or going from Minnesota to Washington, excuse me. Uh, Sam Cosme going from Texas to Miami. Quiddy Pay, the Toyota. Um, going to Indianapolis to replace Justin Houston. Jalen Phillips, the edge rusher, going to replace Jadavian Clowney in Tennessee. Najee Harris and Travis Etienne going back-to-back -to, -back to the Jets and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, pick 25, Tevin Jenkins solidifying the other tackle position after the Jaguars tagged Cam Robinson. Um, Ojalari from Georgia going to Cleveland. Terrace Marshall Jr. going to Baltimore because Baltimore needs receivers badly. New Orleans taking Greg Newsom the second. The Packers selecting Aaron Robinson to play slot and then possibly double dipping in the second round. Buffalo taking Nick Bolton to play Will Linebacker to replace Matt Milano. Kadarius Tony going 31 to Kansas City. The rich get richer. And entrusting Tampa Bay to pull greatness out of Gregory Russo at pick 32. So that's going to cap off my very first mock of 2021. I um, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, make sure you guys comment. Tell me what I got wrong. Tell me what I got right. Um, and we'll be back again pretty soon with another 2021 mock draft.